I hate Norman Osborn in modern Spider-Man comics. This is something that's been bugging me for the longest time. If you've watched my other videos, you would know that I've touched upon Norman Osborn in the recent Zeb Wells run of comics, and I've spoken out about how I don't really like him there. Well, this video, I'm going to talk more in depth about why I don't like him or what his character represents in modern Spider-Man comics. If you enjoy my content and like to talk about Spider-Man, then subscribe. What are you waiting for? Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Anyway, let's go. Let's start with the basics, okay? Norman Osborn is overused. Let's make that really clear. Whenever Spider-Man needs some massive payoff or there is someone that's behind the scenes pulling all the strings, there usually are two candidates that take this spot. And that's either Doc Ock or more commonly, it's Norman Osborn. You have Dark Reign, Goblin Nation, the original Goblin story, Death of Gwen Stacy, and whatever Zeb Wells is cooking up right now will probably lead into Norman being the Goblin all along as well. Either way, Norman Osborn is overused when it comes to these type of stories. I understand that he's Spider-Man's arch nemesis, you know, like Batman to the Joker type thing, you know, he's got that kind of relationship. And without Green Goblin, you wouldn't have Spider-Man because of the influence he's had over Peter's life, but at this point, Let's just leave Norman to the past. Let's move on. Make new villains that are significant to Peter of the now. And villains that can influence the events of Peter's life in the present. Stop reverting back to a villain that has been used more than my toilet after some spicy chicken wings. Love you Norman, okay? But come on, man. And I guess this leads me on to my main point when it comes to me not really liking Norman in modern comics. And that's the fact that because he's been used so many times, it's almost like... It undervalues what he brought to the table during those crucial moments in Spider-Man's life. The death of Gwen Stacy and other significant moments are being drowned out and looked past when they really, really shouldn't be. But at least Norman is still the goblin, right? Right? He's he's still they they still fight, right? He's still the goblin. What? what? Norman is a good guy? Okay, let me make one thing very, very clear. I actually don't hate this idea, but just wait. This idea is actually pretty cool, and I think it does work for a Peter Parker that hasn't already had the love of his life taken from him by the man that he now works with. Yes, yeah, so, essentially, this idea would work if, you know, Norman hadn't killed Gwen Stacy, but he kinda has, so it kind of makes this seem a little weird. For example, in Spider-Man Freshman Year, right? Okay, so it looks like they're going to be taking this idea that Norman and Peter will be working together, right? That's the baseline idea that Zeb Wells has. But what Zeb Wells hasn't considered is the fact that Norman has killed Gwen Stacy and done multiple atrocities across the whole time that the Spider-Man comics have been happening, but just decides, you know what? It's alright, I guess. However, in Spider-Man Freshman Year, obviously Peter and Norman are only just getting to know each other and Norman hasn't actually committed any of these atrocities that we have just discussed. Norman will be filling in that mental role after Peter loses Uncle Ben, which I really like to see. And since Tony Stark had a massive influence over Peter in the MCU and because Freshman Year is going to be heavily based around the events of the MCU, then Norman will almost certainly be filling that role. And it's no different than the Zeb Wells comics. Norman in the comics at the moment is a mentor figure to Peter Parker. They both work together to fight crime. They both solve problems together. Norman even offers Peter a job. But you can see where the issue is, right? In Spider-Man Freshman Year, Norman isn't the Green Goblin yet, which allows you to create a realistic friendship and almost father-son-like dynamic between the two of them before you eventually turn Norman into the Green Goblin. Because there's no doubt that in Spider-Man Sophomore Year or whatever other sequels they have planned, that Norman will definitely become the Green Goblin at some point. However, in the comics, Norman has already been the Green Goblin, which makes it so much more unrealistic that Peter would ever work with him. Gwen Stacy's death is meant to haunt Peter Parker for the rest of his life. And it's not even like Zeb Wells doesn't understand this, because we saw in Judgment Day, which, by the way, is in the same run, that Peter is still haunted by the death of Gwen Stacy. And I'm not gonna lie, Judgment Day was actually probably one of the best issues in this entire run. I actually quite enjoyed that book. But once again, Norman being that mentor figure to Peter Parker and them two actually working together undermines what Gwen Stacy's death brought to the table for the character. And before anyone tells me that Peter was actually hesitant to work with Norman at first, I do not care. No matter how much you tell me that Peter and Norman can really work something out after what happened with Gwen, that is one partnership that should never be able to happen no matter what. 
This is the biggest rivalry in Marvel's history. This is a character that is linked to one of the most crucial moments in comic book history. And you're telling me that Peter Parker, the man that's had so much hardship through his life because of Norman Osborn, is now willing to work with him because of some stupid magic spell that meant his sins were revoked? <laughs> sure. It just doesn't work. I understand that they want to do something different with Norman's character and try to include him wherever possible in the Spider-Man comics because he is one of the most important characters after all. But it's getting ridiculous now. It's just, it's time to stop. I hope after this run is over and whenever Norman eventually becomes the Green Goblin again, that they actually move him on because I do not like this take on this character. I just, I don't like Norman in the modern comics. He should not be a good guy. It just doesn't make any sense. And like I said, even if he wasn't a good guy, he doesn't really bring anything new narratively either, other than he's just Spider-Man's arch nemesis, I guess. Yay, right? He's used for stakes, but that's just lazy writing at the end of the day. You could create new stakes with new characters, give Spider-Man new rivalries. The good thing and the beauty about the comic books is that the comic books can basically do whatever they want, right? Because they are the source material that the movies, the games, and everything else is adapting from. You can create new and original characters like you've been doing for the past 60, 70 years. Just make new villains. Just give Spider-Man new villains, man. Just give him something. Just something. Either way, thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe if you are new. I'm, I'm watching you. I Subscribe, because if you're watching this video, if you got this far, you like Spider-Man, that's for sure. So, subscribe, because you, just do it. You won't you won't regret it. We, we post Spider-Man, you know, and hit the bell too, because we post every Wednesday and Saturday. So, you know, make sure you're subscribed. Either way, join the members club if you really love Spider-Man content for 99 pence a month. 99 pence is not even a full pound. You could get early access to every single video that we post. So if you really like my content, then, you know, do that. And also you get priority reply to comments. You know, you get shout outs at the end of every video. If you stay to the end of this video, you'll notice that all the members are shouted out at the end. And stuff like that, you know, there's a bunch of other perks you can get. There's a higher tier, and then you get exclusive content, which... Only you guys get to see if you remember. But anyway, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.